Discussion on Important Aspects of Prosthetic Valve Endocarditis Prosthetic Valve Endocarditis is a serious disease with unfavorable outcome. Staphylococcus aureus is the commonest organism in prosthetic valve endocarditis. More complications like paravalvular leak and abscess formation are more common with prosthetic valve endocarditis. Fortunately, the incidence of early prosthetic valve endocarditis has come down due to better perioperative care and infection control. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button. Press the bell icon after that for all updates. There is a difference between mechanical and bioprosthetic walls. The mechanical walls do not allow the adherence of the organism unless there is a thrombus. The infection is most often in the region of the annulus and causes myocardial invasion and abscess, but is less likely to produce valvular obstruction. More of paravalvular problems are likely with mechanical prosthesis. Bioprosthetic valves have a higher rate of infections and resembles that of a native valve endocarditis. Transthoracic echocardiography has a yield of only 15% in mechanical processes as it is the annulus which is most often involved. Transesophageal echocardiography is much better for the detection of vegetations and even small periprosthetic leaks. Abscesses and unstable processes are better detected by TEE. Staph and fungal endocarditis is more common with early prosthetic valve endocarditis. Surgical therapy has an edge over medical therapy for the treatment of prosthetic valve endocarditis. Large vegetations is one of the reasons while mechanical complications and fungal endocarditis are better treated surgically. Biofilm over the wall prevent penetration of antibiotics. Microabscesses which are more common with staph aureus endocarditis also prevent proper medical treatment. Rifampicin is one drug which can penetrate the biofilm and microabscesses. Vangomycin and oxacillin are two good drugs commonly used in the treatment of prosthetic valve endocarditis. Gentamicin is also useful. Linisolid is often used as a bailout drug in very sick patients who cannot be given vangomycin due to renal problems. International collaboration on endocarditis from Duke University, the pioneers in endocarditis research reported that a little less than half of the thousand odd patients with prosthetic valve endocarditis underwent early surgery while the rest underwent medical therapy. They found that after adjustment for clinical factors and survivor bias, early surgery for prosthetic valve endocarditis was not associated with lower in-hospital or one-year mortality. But prosthetic valve endocarditis did have a high one-year mortality rate. Indications for surgery in prosthetic valve endocarditis has been discussed in another video on this channel. 3D echocardiography and CT are evolving modalities for diagnosis of prosthetic valve endocarditis. PCR has a high yield for detection of prosthetic valve endocarditis compared with conventional blood culture. Because of dense acoustic shadowing related to the components of the prosthetic wall, role of echocardiography is often limited in the diagnosis of prosthetic valve endocarditis. Positron emission computer tomography is being used more often in detecting foci of active inflammation or metabolism in infective endocarditis. One study used 18 fluorodeoxyglucose PET CT in 92 patients. The study also had patients with cardiac implantable device related infections as they also had similar diagnostic problem with echocardiography. Supplementing Duke's criteria with 18 fluorodeoxyglucose PET CT increased the sensitivity from 52% to 91% with a slight fall in specificity from 95% to 89%. The authors further noted that reclassification from possible endocarditis to either definite or rejected category could be done in 95% which has great clinical significance. This would permit early initiation of antibiotic therapy in definite cases while avoiding unnecessary prolonged antibiotic therapy in rejected cases. There was an additional value in combining CT angiography with PET CT by enabling detection of larger number of anatomical lesions associated with active endocarditis 
than non-enhanced PET CT. A comparison of prosthetic valve endocarditis in transcatheter aortic valve replacement versus surgical aortic valve replacement has been published. Pooled cohort of all patients in partner 1 and partner 2 trials were analyzed with a total of 8530 patients among whom there were 107 cases of prosthetic valve endocarditis. They found no difference in the incidence of prosthetic valve endocarditis between tower and surgical AVR. Predictors in both groups were renal, lung and liver disease. Most cases in both groups occurred between 31 days and 1 year. Most important finding was that prosthetic valve endocarditis was associated with a more than fourfold risk of death. In this study, early prosthetic valve endocarditis was defined as before 30 days, 31 days to 1 year as intermediate and beyond 1 year as late. Here are the first set of journal references. Second set of journal references are here. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.